I'm Chef Kelly, and this is what I do. Sunday brunch. Chef Kelly Luton is here from Two Unique Caterers and Pure Foods and her daughter. Is it Lauren? Yes. Like? You got it. Nice. Lauren. Yeah. I didn't know you had Look a daughter. you and a beautiful daughter. I, and I, wow. I, I thought, started oh. when I was like 13, right? I know. I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> I was a young mom. You know? <laughs> no, I'm trying to get this without burning them, by the way. All right, this is the fond in the bottom of the pan, by the way. Which it's is what? Really, it's called fond. It's like when you caramelize meat and you cook something and it's that Good stuff at the bottom. Oh, hey, next I'm time. Not looking excited, Jay. Next time I burn something, I'm going to call it bomb. That's right. All right. Okay. So here we go. We're going to make two dishes today. Uh, the first dish we're going to make is a nested, nested mm -hmm. turkey leek, uh, turkey sausage leek pie, mm. and uh, we're going to get that rolling. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is cut our leeks. I could have sworn that was celery. That's what I thought too. Yeah. Well, yeah. leeks are, you know, it's a wonderful little onion in the onion family, and it's just kind of a little more dressy and fancy, and since it's Easter and all, I thought we'd fancy it up a little bit. You could use regular onions if you wanted to. All right, so Jay, if you could get you to stir for me. Stirring. Yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna cook those leeks down. Um, I like to use a little coconut oil in my cooking because it has a really high burning point, and it's not like you taste the coconut, but you could use a little olive oil, you could use a little butter if you like, whatever you like to saute in. So we'll just kind of get that rolling. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and add our, um, once it caramelizes a little bit, you know, we're going to work a little faster because it's TV time. Mm -hmm. You're getting to be quite the cook, uh, Mr. Tower. Right. He is a good cook. He yeah. yeah, is. Just ask him. You could cook. <laughs> Lady. <laughs> all right, so we're going to get all that, like, you know, nice sauteed up together, golden. You can kind of smell it. Always when we're sauteing, you know, a little salt and pepper, right? Right. Sea salt, right? Right. Love it. Right. right, okay. So then we're going to take um, a little bit of our brown rice um, flour, or you could take, you know, panko breadcrumbs or whatever you like. We're almost kind of making like a little baby kind of sausage sort of pan gravy right here, just to kind of tighten it up a little bit. And we're going to cook that down a little bit, Jay. You're doing a great job. Thank you. We're going to deglaze it with a little bit of chicken stock. You can buy that kind in the carton if you like. All right? And then a little bit of heavy cream. Oh, I yeah. like that carton chicken stock, by it's the way. It's really pretty good. That I like that free organic range. One. Yeah, yeah, the free range really one. Good. That's good. All right, well, everything with kale is butter. Just kind of like quinoa, too, right? <laughs> yeah. Quinoa's our joke. Right? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But, quinoa. you know, you messed me up with the kale because now it's covered everything. I don't know what's cooked. All right, let's just spark it up really high. So we're going to keep, like, moving that, stirring that. We're going to let that, like, cook down for probably about five to six minutes. I don't know if we have five to six we're minutes. We're not going to. Okay. So then we're going to just take our, our awesome cheese. Swiss cheese, and we're going to just, like, blend that in. All right. And then we're going to end up with something that looks like this. Ta-da! Lauren, could you hand me my phyllo, please? Yes. Other. Want to shut off? Should we shut this off? Are we done cooking? Yeah, we're done. Okay. All right, so here comes the nest part, which is kind this of fun. This comes the best part. This is our filo dough, which mm -hmm. kind of looks like that in the package. And then all we're going to do is we're going to cut, like, just that way, We're going to cut little strips and almost make, like, you know, like a kind of like a little nest. So we're just going to, we're going to butter these three sheets high, and it says in the directions. And then we're just going to kind of make a big mess out of it. So you don't have to worry about being perfect with this at all. The reason why I like the recipes we picked today, because they're nice and brunchy. They're not very difficult, but it's something different than like just ham on a table. And mm -hmm. not that I'm dogging the old family ham, so I don't want to get in How trouble. How do you keep your phyllo dough moist? I work with it really fast. Oh, okay. Or if you don't, you can use like a little paper towel, like, paper towel with mm -hmm. little piece of saran. And that's our nest. And then we would bake that up. And it would look like this. I kind of put an egg in it just to show that it's a nest. You know, that could be like a colored Easter egg. Or now, what is that? Is that a side dish or is that something to eat? That could be an entree. That could be something you serve with your waffles, pancakes, eggs. Beautiful. It's beautiful. All right. 
And then our second dish is going to be the pork wellington, which I think is like one of the best things you could do. You know, in lieu of a ham. Right. It's kind of boring to always have ham all the time for Easter. Mm -hmm. So I actually like this a lot. So what we did was we took, you know, your regular pork loin, butterfly to cut it in half just to make sure that it cooks properly. And you might want to brine it the night before um, to give it a little bit of extra flavor. The recipe's online on how to do that. But then the next morning, you'll just take a knife, you know, put some slits in it. And then what we did was we put some onion, we put figs, we put some dates, kind of just shove those all in there to kind of add some flavor. We have some thyme here, put some sea salt and pepper on it. And then you just, you know, lay it right here. You take some ham, you roll it like this, and then I'll move this over here. And you have your lovely puff pastry. What doesn't taste good with puff pastry? I, more. <laughs> I make everything with puff pastry and pinatas. <laughs> pork loin, anything you want. So you put it in here, um, and you're gonna put the puff pastry on, like this. And then you wanna make sure that, um, actually before you well, before you put it in here, I, sh I should mention this, you wanna braise it, pro or I'm sorry, sear it in the oven for about 400 degrees, or you wanna put it in a pan for about, you know, 10 minutes just to help lock in the juices. But you'll seal this up. Usually I would use Maybe a fork or something, but that's fine. Have a little bit of egg wash. I always use my fingers. My mom probably, <laughs> my mom probably uses she's, a brush because like, she's more fancy. Like, use the brush, Lorraine. Use the brush. Standing by with a knife. Well, you were disinfected before you started. Oh, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And a couple Stab of it. pokes. Because if you don't, if you don't put some pokes in it, then it's gonna be this big mm -hmm. thing. The air needs to vent through the pastry, otherwise it's gonna really be like a big old poof ball. Right. And as you can see over here, I mean the finished product. Oh. I mean it didn't take a lot of time. Really good. Right. It's simple dish. Should be lovely room temperature, warm. Anything you like. We could that with the sausage pie, one or the other, both. Just a nice idea for a different meat at Easter. Yeah. I love when I become Mikey and everybody tells Jay to try it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I already had some here. I bet she's in. hungry. Uh, hey, it's good seeing you. So the recipes are up on yeah. myfoxdetroit.com. Nice yeah. seeing you guys. Happy Easter. Yeah. Happy Easter. Easter.